that's all of the necessary fluff out of the way. Now we're going to get down to business. Let's see what this is all about. It's time to see what these businesses have been building, what the venture is all about, and what the investment opportunities are. Each of the CEOs is going to present their business to you. We're not going to be running Q&A between or during. All that will happen outside of the courtyard, and tea, coffee, and snacks afterwards. We're running through the pictures. We know that you guys have got uh, other places to get to afterwards. So we want to give you enough time after this process to have a quick chat and connect with anybody you want to connect with, set up the meetings, and at least that, uh, that work is in process. So we're going to move straight into our first venture. It's, um, it's a heck of a thing to be a professional in a career for 20 years, uh, to be defined by that career, to become so excited about something else, a new business opportunity, that you literally consider turning your back on the very career that's defined you. And in this case, it's chiropractics. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce you to a man who's considering doing that just that, the CEO of Punta Grand Times, and uh, who's building, when you see the business that Grant is building with his partner Andy Hatfield, I think you understand why he's considering getting out of fixing people's backs. Grant Irons, CEO of Punta. Hi, thanks Brad. Hi everyone, my name is Grant Irons, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Punta. So every week, that was a great start. So what we also work on in the accelerator is testing how well they work under pressure. <laughs> this is a good opportunity to see, is he investable? <laughs> so it's not going to so every week, that's a three minute CD. But millions of sports fans around the world, that's a number, gather in stadia, pubs, and at other sports fans' homes to watch live sport. But the question needs to be asked, how many of these sports fans know that within the game that they are watching lies another game? A game so exciting that if played, would amplify the excitement of the live sports event. Many sports fans like to think that they have an in-depth knowledge of the game. So what would happen if you gave them the opportunity to not only predict the outcome of the game in total, but the outcome of each micro-event that makes up the game. In football, there are three basic micro-events. Corners, penalties, and direct free kicks. On the screenshot behind me is a, is a, a, a shot that's been taken just after a free kick has occurred. So, let's see a show of hands. Who here thinks that the outcome of this event is going to be a goal being scored. Let's see a show of hands. Who thinks a save is going to take place? Who thinks that the ball is going to be cleared or that the striker is going to miss the goals? All right, so let's watch the outcome of this event. Save. So for those of you who predicted save, you've just won five points. The rest of you, you've just lost three points. Yeah. And for those of you who didn't put up your hand, you've lost one point. So pun uh, this is um, for those, those are the five points that you got. So Panther is a real-time social sports prediction game that you play against your mates while you're watching live sports on television. You play it on your mobile phone or tablet in the form of an app. This is a screenshot of um, another uh, micro prediction, the corner, and it's an example of what would get pushed to your phone at the time of the corner occurring, and you make your selection on the screen. Another very exciting button is the goal coming button. You push this button whenever you think a goal is coming, and the counter counts down for 45 seconds, and if a goal is scored during this time, you get points. You only have eight opportunities per half to push this button. What's nice about Panther is you can call mates into a private room where you can play the game amongst yourselves. And your status within that room is reflected on a leaderboard. There's also a global leaderboard to show you where you sit amongst everyone else playing. So, the market. There is a time when sports fans watch sports on their own, on their couch, in their main cave. And while the sports fan sits there on his own on his couch, we know what he holds in his hand and simultaneously plays with. <laughs> a multi-million multi dollar industry tells us that it's a second screen. 
the, the, sec the first screen being the TV that he watches, and the second screen being the mobile device that he holds in his hand. The phenomenon of second screening is where a, a viewer uses a mobile device to engage further with the content that they're consuming on television. According to the Consumer Electronics Show, this year alone, only within the United States, the second screening market is worth $490 million, and it's thought to project to $5.6 billion by 2017. At present, sports fans are communicating amongst uh, themselves during this live sports event using social media, WhatsApp, and BBM. The problem with these communication portals is that they, they're a little bit too noisy, and it's often difficult to separate the good stuff from the bad. I mean, who wants to hear from a long-lost primary school friend about her cat, Binky, when you try to engage with your mates around a live sports event? So the punters aim to own the second screening market during a live sports event, and we propose doing this by not only proposing, uh, by not only supplying the game mechanic, but also a chat function as well. So we want to be thought as a man cave aggregator, linking men around the world while they sit alone in their man caves. Let's get down to numbers. There are 18, according to a recent poll by Apps, there are 18.5 million South Africans who enjoy watching soccer. And according to Facebook, we can reach a million of them right now because they have smartphones and tablets. So who are our competitors? Firstly, they're the uh, gambling houses, both locally and internationally. But they all claim to offer a real-time bet. It's not nearly as real-time as Panther gets to each micro-event. And also, if any of you have tried to place one of those, those real-time bets, it's quite a difficult process. Other competitors are the football fantasy leagues. Um, the problem with that is it's quite long-winded. You have to play every single week and guess the outcome of each game. And um, you have to be in for the whole season. With Panther, you can sit down and play one game for 90 minutes. Aside from so, um, Facebook and Twitter, there are other social media initiatives that ask you to check in and to share the media that you're consuming with other people, but they don't really focus on sport. So, product validation. Uh, we initially started testing our product using WhatsApp trials, um, and the more WhatsApp trials we did, the more we realized that a combination of our game mechanic and chat was a winning formula. So thanks to Seed Engine's um, injection of Seed Capital and their structured 12-week program, we've been able to develop um, we've been able to, to develop a very sexy HTML version of our app. And we used uh, this, we had the launch of this app on this past weekend where we um, where we got sports fans to play our game while they watched five different Premiership League, Premiership League games. And we gathered the following um, data points. 59 uh, people checked out our game during the two days. On average, there were 33 micro events within each game that allowed um, a person to place a punt. The goal coming button was clicked 223 times at an accuracy of 8.6%. <laughs> and there were 571 other predictions made on um, the different uh, micro events which we're pretty chuffed about. So if Panther is a free game to download and to play, how do we intend monetizing it? Well, there are three basic revenue streams. The first one is through sponsorship and advertising. The second one is a, um, through the sale of power-ups. And the third one is a pay-to-play model. So we have, various, uh, we have quite a bit of space for different layers of advertising and sponsorship where a brand can attach themselves to a particular game or a particular team or to um, the, uh, the, um, the event itself. Uh, this is an example of the title sponsorship. We also have in-game advertising and then where you're really in someone's faces advertising with each one of the micro-events that come up. We are very excited to say that we've recently secured a strategic partnership and merchandise sponsorship with Cover. Thanks very much, guys, and we're really excited to have you guys on board. So looking at the numbers, we've circled 10,000 there, and the reason for the circle of 10,000 is that it is the amount of fans we expect to have required by the World Cup next year in June 2014. Now, that, this figure alone is based on one game being played by 10,000 people in one month. One game a month, and so from sponsorship and advertising, we're looking at 25,000 rand. 
The second model, as I said, was the sale of power-ups. Power-ups are these awesome little instruments that you can buy that allow you to get a one-upmanship on your mates while you play the game. So you can block a mate from scoring a goal. It's things like mulligans where you can reverse a silly move that you've made. Um, and we looked at, say, the 25% uptake by the 10,000 people using it at 5 Rand, equated to 12.5 thousand Rand by 10,000 users. That's one game in one month. And then there was a pay-to-play model where you would pay us 20 Rand, and we said there's an uptake of 10% here, to play a game and win great prizes. And we thought this was a perfect fit to using pub quizzes, which are huge all around the world. So in total, just 10,000 people playing our game, one game a month, we're looking at a revenue stream of 57,000 Rand. That's one game a month. There are eight Premiership League games in one weekend. That's just the Premiership League. What about the rest of European football? What about the PSL? And that's just football. Hunter's looking to go into other sports games such as soccer, such as rugby, golf, cricket, and tennis. Now, remember we spoke of 571 chances of placing punt during our WhatsApp trials? Take that figure and not connect it to the concept of sports betting and think how that can scale. Sports betting in South Africa this year is worth 9 billion Rand and it's grown 85% in the last two years. So what do we need to make this happen? Punt is looking for an investment of a million Rand which will allow us to develop our iOS and Android apps. It will allow us to grow our team and acquire the 10,000 users that we want to get before the World Cup. And it will also allow us to execute our gaming revenue models. Thank you very much. Uh, and then, yes, before I say thank you very much, what is goal for Panther is we want to claim the second screening space in South Africa during the World Cup next year. Thank you very much for being here, and we look forward to playing Panther with you soon.